Welcome, everybody, to the Friends of the Cabildo member lecture series. I hope that you've uh, taken advantage of these as a member of the Friends of the Cabildo, which are always which are always free, and um, and um, I hope that uh, you know you've taken advantage of of some of the things that we have going on. We have a lot going on. We also have another member lecture series um, on November twenty first. We have Dr. Lenora Tate, um, who's going to be talking about. Um, the name of the title of the, the lecture is From Desegregation to Ownership. Um, doc, uh, Dr. Tate is a civil rights icon here in New Orleans, um, and she's featured heavily in the new Civil Rights Museum, which through your membership, you get to you get to uh, you can go for free. It's in the first. Uh, uh, the first uh, hall A of the, um, the convention center. So uh, you could just take your membership. You can go take check in there and you could go check out the uh, Louisiana Civil Rights Museum. Um, I've seen, um, we actually sent somebody over there to take some photos of it um, yeah, on Monday. It looks amazing. So I hope you take advantage of that. And then we also have on December 9th, we have our 10th annual symposium. When the fair comes to town, the 19 the 1884 and 1984 world's fairs all of that is recorded we have six speakers that day um so we'd love for you to join us and then on december 12th we have our 19th century new orleans christmas traditions with uh herman greenman house's curator katie burleson so i hope you take advantage of all of those as we uh keep going through the through the rest of this year but tonight we're going to be getting an update about america 250 and our speaker tonight is bob freeland and bob is a a uh, board member of the Friends of the Cabildo, or former president of the Friends of the Cabildo, uh, and he's also a member of the America 250 Commission, um, and he's going to talk about his role on that and what is happening. Um, this is a state commission that he's going to talk about, but it's uh, all through a national program to for us to celebrate the uh, uh, 250th anniversary of the founding of the United States of America. So um, I hope you will enjoy this, and if you're being recorded, if you're watching it on the recording, I hope you enjoy it as well. So Bob, welcome so much, and we look forward to learning a lot tonight about America 250. Very good, thanks, Jason. Can everybody hear me? I, I'm assuming yes, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I've got a little problem here. Let me. It's okay. Didn't. It's not moving. Okay. There. There we go. Okay. So, what I'm going to cover in the presentation is an overview of the America 250. I'm going to go back in time a little bit. I I, I don't know everybody on the call. I know Mary Lynn Hyde. I know Jason. Um, Jason wasn't around for the 76, right? I don't think so. And I was not. Yeah, it, it, um, any of us that remember what the bicentennial was, the coins came out, stamps came out, everybody celebrated it. And it's more or less the same thing. So to say semi quincentennial is very difficult. So what they decided on was America 250, make it easy, and, and it's, it's a great logo, so that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm involved with another organization called the Granaderos y Damas de Galvez. Our mission is to educate the public on everything that Spanish Louisiana did during the American Revolution. And so because I'm involved with that organization, and it is through that organization that I was assigned a seat on the Louisiana Commission, I'm going to show you what that organization is doing to give you an idea of how different organizations can partner together and, and, and participate in America 250. I will go over what the national is doing. Then I'm going to go over what Louisiana, the status of the Louisiana program. And I'll end up with the Friends of the Cabildo, my recommendations on, on how we work together and again, as Jason says, I'm, I'm on the board of the Friends of the Cabildo. I am a coordinator for the Spanish Heritage Field Trip Program. And, and so I've got some ideas for the FOC. 
I'm taking this from the national website. And when we're done, I'm going to end up recommending that all of us here on this call, you go to the America 250 website. They prompt you to fill in your email address and your zip code. And once you do it, you'll start receiving um, notifications. And the more of us from Louisiana that actually sign up, the better it is. And so Rosie Rios is the chair. And basically what she's saying, you've read it already by this time, it's about more than reflecting on our past. It is honoring the contributions of the individuals who built this country and who are building it now and who will build it. And it's more than just the past, it's what do we want for the United States in the next 250 years? And that one, that one's a tough prediction, um, but that's what they want us to do, right? And this part of the presentation I'm taking from Annie Mahoney, who is the curator for the Louisiana State Museum in, um, in Baton Rouge, the Capitol Park Museum. She was the secretary of the Louisiana Commission until last month, and she resigned for other reasons, but she's the one that helped us get this going. And the vision, and it depends on how you look at it. And so when you see that America 250, is from 2020 to 2027, please don't say, oh, we still have four more years. I'd rather we all said, oh, we already lost three years in the planning. And so we're really at, at the halfway mark had we taken advantage of this program from the beginning. We are considering the full scope of American history, the pre-revolutionary war era and what does that mean um, in a state like Louisiana, where we are the source of the Mississippian culture and we have Poverty Point that is roughly built at the time of Stonehenge? You have the LSU mounds that are 5,000 years old. The, the, the scope for Louisiana is very different for, for many other states. And we should take advantage of that wide range of, of historical participation that Louisiana has had. They do want to, uh, us to engage the tribal nations, all organizations like the Friends of the Cabildo, all states like Louisiana, and communities across the country. And, and you're going to see with my Granaderos, I'm very involved in St. Bernard and New Iberia, founded during the Galvez era. And so if I can get those cities involved for the Granaderos, I'm doing my, my job. The other thing is getting other countries involved is a key component. And as you're gonna see through this presentation, Louisiana has very strong connections with other countries around the world. And we should, we should leverage that historical connection. Um, the other thing is they are gonna be looking at programs. There will be funding for different programs. There, as they say at the end, if you do it from a tourism point of view, you are going to attract millions of dollars of tourism resources. The other thing is educational resources that will come to the state. Um, and this is where we're doing this for the Louisiana State Museum, Friends of the Cabildo. If we can get money coming to the museum or to the Friends, that's part of that last line there. So we have to be prepared for that. This is past commissions. Now, Annie did the research. She lives in Baton Rouge. I did not really try to add to this with what New Orleans was doing in 76. And it's something I might do at a later day. Um, there were different commissions throughout the U.S., and if you see the last two, Baton Rouge had a Baton Rouge Bicentennial Commission, and then there was a Louisiana American Revolution Bicentennial Commission. And so these commissions might be springing up on their own. I'm here to talk about the America 250 official commission for the whole state. And again, my Galvez group, these are examples of documents that came out about Bernardo de Galvez in time for the revolution. To the left is the logo of the Bicentennial Commission National and the Marcha de Galvez to the right. And th these are two separate Marcha de Galvez brochures. 
the covers change only because of the logo. So if you look at the one on the, the right, that is the logo of the, Louis, the Baton Rouge, Louisiana Bicentennial Commission. This is another example of something that came out at the time related to Galvez and the Battle of Baton Rouge. And then these are some other examples of documents and flyers. So whatever your interest is, imagine people are now writing different documents for for the, the, the America 250. My organization, the Granaderos, we were founded in 1975. And this is an interesting story because this man is still alive today. I was able to participate in a phone interview. And he described what it was like arriving in Houston. At the time, New Orleans had a Spanish council. Miami had a Spanish council. Um, since then, the, the New Orleans Spanish consulate has closed. Miami and Houston both still have them. And the other person on the interview was the man that had been consul in Miami in 1975. And so we listened to these two men in their 90s tell us how they had put together programs reconnecting Spain to the United States back then. And there is a process as we speak replicating this for 2026. And the what triggered it was two men in San Antonio, Texas, that were part of their bicentennial organization. And they started the order, the Granaderos y Damas de Galvez, to educate the public on the contributions that Spain had made during the American Revolution. 2025 will be the 50 year anniversary of the Granaderos. And we are already beginning to plan for that as an organization. And earlier today, the governor general of my organization met with in, in Houston with the ambassador, the Spanish ambassador to the United States, who happens to be visiting Houston. And the two men are talking about what we can do in 2026 between the government of Spain and my organization. And the Bicentennial also saw in New Orleans the founding of Sociedad Española in 1975. Los Islengos Heritage and Cultural Society of St. Bernard in 1976 and the Canary Island Descendant Association of San Antonio. So what is beginning to happen is these organizations that were founded 50 years ago for the Bicentennial are going to start celebrating their 50 years. That's an opportunity. And the other thing that we don't know, what other groups are going to form as a consequence of America 250 and that 50 years from now, we'll be celebrating their 50th. I'm not going to be there. I'm 69 years old, but I, um, you know, I'll, I'll be here for this one here. And so this is from the website. All I did was I put in bold some of the key points that I like. We are going to commemorate our 250th anniversary with inclusive programs. So anything we do, the more groups we bring in, the more chance we have. And when I say that, if you figure that the America 250 Commission has 50 states to worry about, that means that each state will get 2% of whatever funding is available. So it's up to a state like Louisiana, which really has a diverse history and a tourism industry and a museum structure and, and, and multicultural, that the better we are, the better chance we have of getting more than our simple 2%. And partnerships is the way that that's going to happen. And so the vision of America 250 is the shared experiences of everybody. And they want us to inspire service in our communities. And all of us on this call were members of the Friends of the Cabildo, which is a volunteer organization supporting the Louisiana State Museum. So we are an organization that will receive attention. It is nonpartisan. It is, it, it is formed at the federal, but they are making sure that no one party controls. All parties have a chance to participate. And again, they want us to look ahead towards the future. We want to create for the next generation. And the reason I keep on emphasizing this is the way funding is going to be applied. If we're going to apply for grants, we're going to have to meet these requirements. It was established in 2016. 
here we are now seven years later. Rosie Rios was the was the um, um, the um, former treasurer of the United States. And if you sign up and get emails, every once in a while, she'll send you an email updating you on what is occurring. There are 16 private citizens, four U.S. representatives, four senators, as well as 12 other members from all branches of the federal government. So, so the the mind, the minds behind this program really understand the United States nationwide very well. Now, this is a sad thing for me, and so there's what uh, there's just a few of us on on the call. 90 members of Congress are part of the America 250 caucus. No one from Louisiana. So my request to the ones on this call, if any of you know one of our six state reps or our two senators, please reach out to them. I don't have the contacts. I can send a blank email or blank letter. But why is it that something that is so important that 90 other congressmen are already involved, why would no one from Louisiana want to be involved on this commission? We were obliged statewide, uh, nationwide, to create state commissions. 38 states as of today have them, so 12 of them still have not. Um, when, we, when Louisiana started the process, 14 states had already formed commissions. So we're more or less in the middle of the pack, and our commission started earlier in the year. And this is my take from the Granaderos on how Louisiana Commission is set up. This is not the view of the FOC. So what I did was in green are areas that are applicable to the FOC. So we've had now six so, so we went to Congress, the, the state legislature, in May of 2022. The approval was made at the end of 2022. Our first meeting was held in January of 2023. We have now had six meetings. The next one's coming up. And each meeting, we add more and more programs. So we, we now have a structure. And at the last meeting, um, Michael Baham, I, I have him as an Islengo, and that's part of the Galvez story. Uh, he lives in St. Bernard. He's a candidate for um, state representative next week. He's a descendant of the Islengos. I'm representing the Granaderas y Damas de Galvez. Obviously, I'm involved with Friends of the Cabildo. Russ Godwin out of Lake Charles is um, in charge of the SAR in Lake Charles. He's also a member of the Granaderos. And then Michael McKnight is the treasurer of the organization, and he is involved with the LSM through the Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. So the actual commission, the governor gets to choose one person. The lieutenant governor gets to choose one person on the commission. And what we did as a commission, we voted because when the commission was first set up, it's under the Secretary of State but that's not their function. It was simply a holding place legally. And the commission voted on placing the America 250 Louisiana Commission under the Lieutenant Governor because of his Department of Culture, Recreation and Tourism's connections to just about everything that America 250 will do. Um, in green, therefore, I have placed the offices under Billy Nungesser's Lieutenant Governorship he won his election, so there will be no 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 major changes from his office. Um, the fact that the Secretary of Tourism for the state of Louisiana has a position is very positive. Again, for America 250, and I have nothing. Are you going to go to Montana and Kansas and um, Indiana, or if the state of Louisiana puts together a really good? Um, uh, America 250 program, would we be able to attract many more people from all over the U.S. to come and see what it is that we have to offer? Important to us in the museum, the State Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. The president of the Louisiana Historical Association has a member. 
And then the assistant secretary of CRT's office of cultural development. And that includes Corte Field for the Spanish, for the French language. It includes anything related to the Spanish language and other, other cultural um, aspects of Louisiana. The Louisiana Association of Museums has a person and we continue the archivist, the executive director of the Indian Affairs has one member. The president of the Louisiana Endowment of Humanities has one member, the Commission of Higher Education. That person is Sam Hyde, who is um, uh, Louisiana history professor at uh, Southeastern in Hammond. Um, the assistant secretary office of state museums, and that is Susan McClay from the interim director of the Louisiana State Museum. And then the two houses have a person, and those people will be replaced now with the new um, the, the, the new people coming in. There was an addition to the commission. The lieutenant governor can appoint three individuals to be on the commission, and he appointed Kate Bromley for the school superintendent, Michael McKnight, and um, Russ Godwin. So two of the two of us on 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 the officers were were recent appointments, and that's basically who we are. And you can see the 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 way it's formatted, how we're going to lean. It's going to be heavy on tourism and museums and education, and that and that's a good statement. Now I'm going back into the Galvez program. We have chapters in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. Galvez fought battles in Mississippi, Alabama, and Missouri. So we the we the Granaderos are looking to enlist the America 250 commissions in five states, other states, in terms of putting together programs. And again, in Washington, they're going to be looking at multi-state projects are the things that they're going to focus on. And that's our hope anyway. There are Galvez statues in all of these cities that we have list listed at the left. There's an opportunity for us to partner with the Spanish government and those cities that have statues related to the Galvez story. In Baton Rouge, there is no Galvez statue, but they have Galvez Plaza. They have the mural for the March of Galvez. This is what it looks like. And my organization on July 4th started a tradition this year of wreath laying ceremonies. We had 34 people show up after two weeks of planning only because not, no one had ever done it before. And our, our, our comment to this group is imagine what's gonna happen in a couple of years. Um, right, 4th of July, we tend to go down and watch fireworks. We really don't celebrate the the, the US. And, and so, there is an opportunity to do more events at the statues around the country. I visited Vincennes, Indiana. George Rogers Clark is the hero of the American Revolution. Took Kentucky, Illinois, and Indiana from the British using guns and munitions smuggled by Galvez up the river. St. Louis at this time was a Spanish city the British did try to take back those states. There was a Battle of St. Louis fought by the Regiment of Louisiana and the American militias. And in Vincennes, they have a two-day event every year at Memorial Day. And this is just one photo of the numbers of people that show up. Here's our proposal. This is downtown Baton Rouge. For all of you that have been down to the Capitol Park, very few people realize that it was the site, as you can see on the right, the Battle of Baton Rouge during the American Revolution. And the arrow to your left is the Pentagon Barracks. That was Fort Richmond, the British fortifications. The arrow on the bottom is where Galvez lined up his big cannons. There was a, a grove of trees, more or less like what the arrow points at. He lined them up behind the grove the British couldn't see him. And then the other arrow to the right is where he faked the British into thinking he was going to attack from that angle. And so the British had lined their, their artillery pointed at the Capitol building. And on the morning of September 21st, Galvez cut the grove of trees down and opened fire, defeating the British almost immediately. 
And everybody that works in the Capitol Park area, not one of them really understands that every day that they walk through there, they're walking on the site of a battlefield during the American Revolution. And again, this is the perspective of the Granaderos. And what do we want to do with the Capitol Park area? So this is our third annual event. We've partnered with the Louisiana State Museum, Capitol Park Museum. They have a discovery day every September. It's on a Saturday for kids. The Granaderos held a procession on the site of the battlefield. We have partnered with the Daughters of the American Revolution and the Sons of the American Revolution. Again, I'm speaking to members of the Friends of the Cabildo. If we could get these two groups more involved with the Friends, you have hundreds and thousands of members throughout the state of Louisiana that, that can provide resources, programs, and membership. So I encourage the Friends of the Cabildo to partner with these two organizations on programs that involve the Galvez story, um, simply because we all have the same thing in common. The other thing for the Granaderos, we are called the Granaderos, the dumbest the Galvez. We are focused on what women do and what women did. And in these photos, we have some of the women uh, down below. I'm, I'm there with a, a lady from Baton Rouge, Lauren Porcio, who portrays Marie Felicité. In the lower hand, on the left, I'm there last year at the Ghostly Gallivant, a fundraiser for the Friends of the Cabildo, and I'm again with Marie Felicité. So Marie Felicité was Marie Felicité, St. Maxon Destrahan, the widow Destrahan, she was a woman from New Orleans that made it all the way to Countess in Spain. Her story is fantastic. And in Louisiana, we really do not know it. The upper two photos, one of the women to the right, she is the wife of a reenactor who is a private, and you see him in his regiment of Louisiana uniform. So she has been researching women's, the, the peasant woman's dress so that she can now go with her husband, who is a private, not the plantation owner. And we're beginning to see more interest in women's clothing. And so in the other picture to the right, the lady in red is Mary Dugas, who is a um, president of the Cabildo volunteer. And the lady with me down below is Betty Jane Bernardo, who is also a friend of the Cabildo volunteer. So you're beginning to see, even without merging formally on America 250, the Friends of the Cabildo does have members that, that that are interested in this aspect of Louisiana history. And this was our third annual March of Galvez events that the Granaderos put together. And as you see, we started August 10th with an organization called Learning for, Before Lunch. We went to the Islengo Museum, New Iberia, um, Capitol Park. We had field trips for students at the Cabildo and the Capitol Park Museum. And um, we ended up with the September 21st event at Capitol Park. And tomorrow I go to the Islengo Museum as, as Galvez. And the Islengo Museum is partnered with the St. Bernard School Parish Board. And we will have 1,100 third and sixth graders, every third and sixth grader in the parish mandatory visit to the museum tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. And that is a partnership between a museum and the Granaderos and the school board. And that's an example of what can be done. Um, the Cabildos in New Orleans, we can pick other, other school boards, but hold that in, in, in mind as a possible project. And so what we're saying is working together with universities, the history and Spanish departments, the community service departments. The, we want the America 250 to support all the museums in Louisiana, all the school and university programs that can be developed. Um, we put here the Spanish Honorary Council. And as I mentioned, um, my, our partnership with the Granaderos with Maria Page, who is the Honorary Council, is very strong. And today my, my boss is meeting with the Spanish ambassador we could, we could take out Spanish Honorary Council and simply substitute for the Louisiana Counselor Corps. 
and we work with those honorary councils and actual councils to bring their countries into promoting Louisiana's America 250. And then what follows after that is the tourists, right? If you're a tourist from that country, are you gonna to go to Boston, New York, Washington, DC? Why not Louisiana and New Orleans to, to learn about American history? And we are promoting, this is not something I did for tonight's presentation. This is how I, to my internal organization, we do recommend that our members become members of the Friends of the Cabildo. The only thing I did for today's presentation was I added in the Friends of the Cabildo logo. And this is my goal for the Granaderos y Damas de Galvez, that in Louisiana in 2026, every student, one way or another, is going to learn about the role of Spanish Louisiana in the American Revolution. We're talking about, I think it's 380,000 students. And how do you do it? You update the Louisiana Department of Education curriculum through the museum. Uh, the education department's already working on that. Um, I will give you an example. Tomorrow, I'm going to St. Bernard. I go dressed up as Galvez. I tell the, ask the students, um, and I did this last year, so I know. Uh, do you know who St. Bernard is named after? It's actually named after Bernard de Galvez. And you, you mess around with the kids, and, and I say, well, it's named after me. And one of the fourth grade teachers told me, I can't teach that because it's not in the curriculum. And she's not saying that she refuses to teach that. It's that when a teacher takes over fourth grade, they receive a curriculum from the state and they have to learn what they can teach. And they're flexible up to a point. As the fourth, teacher, fourth grade teacher left my booth, a third grade teacher came and she told me, I teach social studies and social studies is more flexible. And the Spanish department state curriculum really allows the Spanish teachers, as long as it has something to do with culture and vocabulary, they can teach it. So if we start working, we the Granaderos start working with the Department of Education, we'll be able to make sure that all levels and all programs at some point talk about the Galvez story. We're gonna work with the university history departments and libraries to work through the Louisiana Association of Museums. And, and the, the reason I say this is important, um, as a tourism destination, after the World War II Museum opened up in New Orleans, it changed the culture of tourism. And we had always focused, and nothing wrong with it, on music, on Bourbon Street, getting drunk, and the, and the saints. But when you have a museum like the World War II Museum, accompanied by the Civil War Museum, the Ogden, Noma, Friends of the Cabildo, Cabildo's, New Orleans Jazz Museum Presbyter, New Orleans becomes a really attractive city for tourism of high quality, people that come and spend more than just a couple of drinks and a couple of meals. So any support we can give to the Louisiana Association of Museums from the Granaderos point of view is super important. And then there are ways to have more Galvez exhibits in every museum and libraries. And as an example, one of my members out of uh, North Alabama, he, if you look at this window in his local library, what he did was he loaned his uniform. He's part of the Sons of the American Revolution um, color guard. Some of the books that he has in his library, he, he placed there, some posters, the librarian helped him find other information. And this is not a complex, super expensive um, program. This one, any city in Louisiana has a public library. If we encourage and get local members of DAR, SAR, Granaderos to get involved, we can work on this type of example. So here's what's super important to both my Granaderos and the Friends of the Cabildo. Field trip programs to all Louisiana State Museums are part of this objective. Um, Jason and I on this call, we have trouble all the time with schools. They end up canceling because they couldn't get a bus at the last moment. So when we, when we start going for grants, we try to include money for transportation. 
And again, a wealthy private school doesn't have the same reality. And we do want to reach out to the poor public schools. Um, the Friends of the Cabildo Education Department right now is working on pre and post field trip materials to improve the school experience. As a Granadero, I support the Galvez story. As a Friends of the Cabildo, I know what the museum is doing and what the friends are doing. That, that bullet is super important and we're going after grants right now. And if any of you on this call can help us, um, that, that's a key component going forward. We do meet, need more volunteers. Um, university students bring in youth and technology, but they change semesters, uh, their agendas each semester. And then older people bring in knowledge and many of them from these last groups that you see there, we tend to be older and retired, but we get sick and disappear over time. So the, the museum has to create a structure where you have the youth from the students unreliable and then the experience of the older groups with the, with, with the caveat that at some point they're gonna have health problems and, and they're, they're gonna roll off your, your volunteer program. So I've divided this page into three calendars. And this each day, we will get new information. So national events that I know of right now is that Lafayette came to the United States 50 years after the American Revolution. There is a program heavily sponsored by France and the United States, the Trail of the Frenchman. And as tour guides in New Orleans, we all knew that he stayed in the Sala Capitular in the Cabildo for a couple of nights. And so the Cabildo will be housing an exhibit in April of 2025 as part of the Trail of the Frenchman. And then he left and he went to other places. So for a whole year or year and a half, they're going to be following the exact route that Lafayette took 200 years ago. Um, in 2026, the logo I have there of Sale 250, and so it's a subset, if you will, of America 250. You have New Orleans in May to June of 2026. The tall ships will then go to Norfolk, Baltimore, New York City, and Boston. So we, Louisiana, New Orleans, will kick off this major event of America 250. We have to be prepared for it. And so here we are, we're talking to the friends of the Cabildo. What will the Cabildo be doing at that time related to the American Revolution to receive all the visitors from around the world that will come and visit New Orleans to see the tall ships? So if you will, Americans will come to see one of the five cities and wherever those ships come from, the navies of those countries will attract citizens of those countries that want to visit the United States. They might not go to all five cities. They're gonna to have to pick one or two cities. They might pick New Orleans. And so we have to be prepared to receive tourists, not only from the US, but from all over the world. And then July 4th in 2026 will be a big event. Machadavia is a city in Spain, the birthplace of Galvez. They already hold one of the largest July 4th worldwide. And, and so they're already preparing for something big in 2026. We, the Louisiana Commission, don't have any America 250 events yet, right? So we are receiving notification of what the national is going to do. We are trying to create local committees and commissions to start getting proposals. And so the last section there, this is my but our, our recommendation at the Granaderos and the Friends of the Cabildo, we have the upcoming 50 years of the Granaderos, 50 years of Sociedad Española, 50 years of the Los Islengos, and the 70 years of the Friends of the Cabildo, and then the National SAR meeting in 2027. So these are just samples of different stations based in Louisiana that in some way or another, are already creating their America 250 programs or um, are looking for partners. 
And this is a simple list of the friends partners with each one of these groups. Imagine what we can do. And so what will America 250 be like in 2026? And what I've done here on this page is I have added the logos of the groups that I work with, with the Granaderos and the Friends of the Cabildo. So the DAR, SAR, the National America 250, the Louisiana State Commission Museum it covers the whole state. The Friends of the Cabildo is at the center. And then in the bottom, the Louisiana Foreign Language Teachers Association, we have a partnership with the Friends and our field trip programs, the Granaderos, and then that Galvez Museum in Macharaviaya. They have a wealth of information on the Galvez story and they're open to sharing information. And so what is the next steps for the Cabildo, Friends of the Cabildo? Jason and I have discussed this. We are gonna form committees. Some of you on this call obviously are interested in the subject. If you're interested, please get a hold of Jason. We have to formulate what our strategy will be. And our strategy is members like yourselves, the walking tour guides, which are uh, uh, very, strong component of our volunteer base and then our board of directors is also going to be engaged in what will the board do and because the lsm is the mothership for what we do anything the lsm does like the march of the frenchman is it going to be followed with a galvez exhibit all of those planning process that the museum will be going into for america 250 we, the friends, will accompany in the same at the same pace. If any of you can help us build up partnerships for the Friends of the Cabildo, please do so with groups that you're a member of, right? So I'm a member of the Granaderas y Damas de Galvez. I'm bringing them in to the Friends of the Cabildo. Um, we're going to need to fundraise. A lot of the funds that are going to come either from America 250 or the state of Louisiana, they're going to ask for matching funds. So we have to be prepared to come up with our own funds to to acquire even more funds. And the other thing very important, let's start planning the 70th anniversary of the Friends of the Cabildo. Uh, 70 by itself isn't a great date, right? If you go from 50 to, to 75, who cares? Let's create something big for America 250 because it is our 70th. And so here's my message to you guys and I'm a member, what, what am I going to do? One, each one of us here should go to the site, right, just put your email down and your zip code. If, if you're not a member of the FOC right now, please do so. When your membership comes up, renew. Um, please get involved as volunteers. We have many events that we and, and programs, field trips, different buildings. We, we could use volunteers in many more areas. If you can help us get more members and build up the friends membership um, and other groups, if you bring in a, a support partner, but if you can get a corporate partner, um, they, they can purchase the Cabildo corporate membership, which is a thousand dollars and it gets benefits that accrue to that level. But a thousand dollars in a membership does contribute very well to the funding that the friends needs. And then the other thing is always consider making donations to the friends of the Cabildo and you're going to see more of our programs going forward. And that's the presentation. I'm open for questions. I can leave it screen share if I have to go back to a page. Um, and, and like I said, Jason and I have been already discussing this and this is the present moment of our America 250 conversation. And you got, what is it? One, two, three, four, five people, four, four people. You're here. How committed do you want to be on this Friends of the Cabildo initiative to join America 250? And that's my closing statement. All right, great, Bob. Um, if anybody has any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, sorry, I'm having a little meltdown over here with the, with the two-year-old. Um, but I didn't notice. Shh. I did notice that I didn't see too many members of uh, New Orleans um, City Council or New Orleans business members. I mean, that seems to be an area that is lacking on the commission. 
Correct. So, 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 so just in terms of, of structure, until, until October, technically we didn't have a board, uh, an elected board. So in the October, so now what we have, we signed the agreement with America 250. We got 10,000 bucks from them. We didn't have a bank account. So then how do you, how do you receive, right? So, so these are the steps that we went through and I'm going into the, the, what, what I'm saying to you, to everybody on this call, because it's a Louisiana state commission, it is an open commission. Um, and, and so I'm not saying anything that you couldn't find in the minutes. So you signed the contract with America 250. So now you're officially part of the program, but they send you 10,000 bucks. Where do you deposit it? So we had to, we had to work on the funding. Um, we were able to get a commitment from the legislature of $100,000. Where do you put it? It's in hold. We didn't have a structure. Okay, now we voted in the structure. We don't have committees. Um, our next meeting in November, um, we will have committees to give you all in. A, so the committees, um, I have volunteered to be part of the education and the events committees. They might accept that. They might not. I, I, I don't know. Um, we voted on a logo. So now we have a logo. So it's up until then, we would have had to use the America 250. We now have a Louisiana Commission logo. So the next step, Jason, to your point, is we start going to all the parishes in the state and saying the same thing. Form your America 250 Commission at the, at the city level. The same way I'm coming to you, the Friends of the Cabildo, form your America 250 Commission. And or committee, whatever you want to call it, and that's that's the process. So the next step is to reach out, and again, if there are parishes that are very good, they're going to sign up quick and start proposing programs. If there are parishes that get bogged down in whatever problems they have, they're going to um, they're they're going to miss the boat. So again, on this call who has the connections with our city to talk to those people would be the, the, the way to go on that. Did, did I answer the question, Jason? Absolutely. The other question yeah. I wanted to ask was, um, unless anybody else puts anything else out there, I'm going to, um, the, the tall ships. I remember when the tall ships was here, I don't even know, it was six, seven years ago, maybe or something like that. Um, and I do, so we do have one event, although it is a federal run one. Um, I just do remember the tall ships being a great event. And uh, you saying that that's going to be happening is a very exciting prospect. Um, just because I went to the last time it was, I think it might've been two times ago. Um, we had a smaller one a couple of years ago, and then probably seven, eight years ago, we had a, a larger one. It was an amazing event and really was great to get to be able to go on the boats and everything. Yeah, okay. So the, the the tall ships came in for 2018, the 300 years of New Orleans. That, that makes was, sense. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And and so what was it? I think it was six or eight ships because it was driven by New Orleans tricentennial. Imagine the federal government promoting a five-city American independence event, we're, we're going to be at the forefront. And if you look at the logo, Jason, and, and I don't know more, um, Sail Boston, Sail 250 um, for New York, Sail, I can't, it's Norfolk. New Orleans, it's the port of, port of NOLA. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or default. We had to pick someone, let's throw Port of NOLA. Um, so to your point on what is the city doing, I'm a commission member. You just asked me, technically speaking, I now have to get back to you <laughs> on on what your city is doing. You, you, you see the dynamic? Yeah, well, it's you're good a citizen we're in, we're in of Louisiana. I'm a commission member. You asked me a question for a Friends of the Cabildo talk, but I have an obligation to get back to you and find out who in the Port of Nola is actually helping plan this. And that's why that 
that question is is more than just a superficial question. It's super important. Absolutely. That's what, that's what I need to know as a commission member. Well, I mean, it, it, it is a uh, great to have an update on his. We'll, hopefully we'll have to, uh, you know, have you in like the next year, year, you know, year and a half or something. Or, you know, as things become even more developed, what do we uh, what we see um, with the commission? Um, but, yes, you guys are starting off from a very, uh, a very uh, rough, uh, rough draft to get this going. And so that seems like it's starting to pick up steam. And as I think as once we get into 2024, we're going to see a lot more information about that. And uh, I look forward to that because I look forward, I, you know, I always hear great things about 1976 right. and I wish, you know, I wish that I, you know, been a part of it, but, uh, but it was, uh, sounds like it was an amazing event. So I'm, I'm looking forward to 2026. So, so, Jason, just as an example, and then we'll let see if anyone else has a question or an answer. Um, if the tall ships are coming in, we should have a exhibit in the Cabildo on 250 years of shipping in in New Orleans, right? You would have how do ships come up? Well, we got the first floor of the Presbyter has the wetlands and the hurricanes. We should we should be preparing the first floor of the Presbyter to talk about shipping in the port and right right so all of that is the way museums can prepare for these events that are going to be happening in in the city and as each one participates two people three people start talking it's it snowballs and it gets bigger and bigger and again if New Orleans and Louisiana are quick. We, so so right so, so here's what's going to happen. You ask that <clears throat> question at the next commission meeting. I've got to ask the rest of the commission. I I received the request for New Orleans. What is the communication process that we the commission are going to take with 64 parishes around the state? And and so if you don't mind, let, let, does anybody else have a question of the other four that are on the call? Oh, they, I, want to mute, they want to put them in the them? chat. They're more than welcome to, but uh, but um, or you're welcome to unmute yourself as well. But well, good. Well, Bob, I yeah, I've given you some uh, some work to do. I didn't mean yeah. to, but I have given you some good oh. work to do. So but it's good work. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, Bob, I we look forward to this. I am uh, I'm excited that we got an update. Um, I think 2024 is going to be a crucial year because it's the time you say in two years. And then instead of saying it's happening next year and that just, you know, that's that's the rough time to be asking for things when it's when it's coming up in 12 months or less. So 2024 is going to be a really big year uh, for this commission. We're excited that you're a part of it. Uh, we're excited that the museum is involved in it. And the friends are involved in it. And uh, like I said, as you mentioned, if you would like to be a uh, too interested in, in participating with the Friends 250 Commission, we're going to be working on this. Uh, so it says, uh, very interesting as usual, Bob, I continue to learn from you and the FOC, glad to be a member. So there you go. So you get you get your props right there. So uh, Bob, thank you so much for your lecture tonight. We will see everybody in two weeks for Dr. Lenora Tate. And, um, and we hope everybody has a great night tonight. Thank you so much, Bob. Bye-bye. Thank you.